Hello and welcome to Ben Rosser's Conservatorium of Audio. I'm Ben Rosser and today we're going to be taking a look at a few different freely available plug-in synths and effects. We're going to have a look at a few different VSTs from a few different companies and we'll throw some sound through them and see what sort of stuff we can come up with. And you may just find that one or more of them may be perfect additions to your plug-in library. So the first one we're going to have a look at today is from Solid State Logic and it's called the Solid State Logic LMC1, or Listen Mic Compressor. It's only got a few simple controls. The main control, which allows you to adjust how much compression you're applying, as well as an input and output gain control. You've also got a control to be able to bypass the compressor. So again, very simple, very easy to use. So we might grab some audio and we'll see what sort of stuff this one can do for us. Might just grab a drum loop to start off with. Might go for the good old Amen break. Chuck that one in there. Might just bring down our input gain a little bit. And apply some compression. If we bypass that one, and one of the other great things about this one is you can even be quite extreme and get some quite good results. So if we push that one all the way, You'll also find this particular compressor can be quite good on reverbs and delays to help enhance them and bring them out more. As you can hear in this particular case, all of the reverb in the sound is being brought right up by the compressor. One of the other great ways to use this one is to blend it in with the original signal and you get a bit of a pulsating sort of feel. So one of the ways you can do this if you're using Ableton Live is just to select the plugin and group it, which puts it into an effect rack for us. This allows us to have multiple chains. So just name that first chain compressor chain, and we'll name the second one our clean chain, like so. And what this allows us to do is to blend both the original sound and the compressed sound. So if we have a listen to that one, So if we just hear the compressor, and then if we just play the original, and then bring those in together, it allows you to retain the articulation from the clean channel while adding the tone and the quality of the compressor in there, and you get quite an interesting feel. If you're using a host other than Ableton Live, you can still use this technique quite easily. There's a few different ways to do it. One of the ways you can do it is by using return channels and your sends. For example, we could put the compressor on one of our return channels. We'll just delete the effect rack from our main channel. And we're just going to put our send on pre-fade so that the fader of our audio channel is not affecting the level of the send. That way we can adjust both of them independently of one another. So we'll just bring down our main volume a little and we'll just add some of the send in there. You'll find when you're blending two channels together, if you bring them both down by about 6 dB, you will tend to find a nice balance without clipping. So again, if we have a listen to that one, if we have a listen to our clean channel without the compression, and then if we have a listen to the send on its own, and as you can see, using our two level controls, you can blend a bit of each of those in there and get the same technique as we had with the effect rate. 
So we'll just get rid of that channel for the moment. The next plugin we're going to be taking a look at is from Togu Audio Line or TAL. And again, just like the SSL compressor, which is available free from the SSL site, the Togu Audio Line plugins are freely available on the TAL website. They've got some great synths and effects on there, so make sure you check those out. We're just going to have a look at one of those today, one of my favourites, which is the TAL UNO 62 synth. It's quite a good synth and is based on the Roland Juno. There is two versions of this one from TAL, the UNO 60 and the UNO 62. The 62 tends to be a little bit more faithful to the original Juno as far as the sound of its filter and a couple of other bits and pieces in there. But they both have a really nice sound. So we might just get a bit of MIDI data happening and we'll see what sort of sound we can get out of this one. Get rid of our compressor for the moment. Just chuck something fairly random in there. And we'll see what that sounds like. Might just adjust this last note, and we'll just bring down the tempo of that one a little bit. Sounds very simple at the moment, however, one of the great things about this particular synth that can give it a really good sound is its chorus effects. As you can see straight away, you're getting a really nice tone out of it. It's also got a few different waves available in its DCO, or Digitally Controlled Oscillator. As well as your typical filter, amplifier and envelope. You've only got one envelope in this particular synth, however it is quite flexible. You can choose whether or not you want to use that for your amplifier. and you can also use it to control the filter using the envelope amount. You also have an option to be able to invert the envelope for the filter, so you can get some really cool drum and bass style synth sounds happening. And again, a very simple synth, but can be quite good for getting some interesting tones, especially if you're after something that's similar to what you would have got out of a Roland Juno. And there's one more plugin which we're going to have a quick look at. It's a very simple one, more of a utility than anything else, but can be very handy, especially in mixing and mastering situations. This one is from PSP, and is called the PSP Vintage Meter, just like the other ones, is available on their website. So we'll just get a bit of sound happening with our synth, and we might even make use of the SSL that we set up in our return channel just to see what that will do to the sound. As you can see, the PSP Vintage Meter is a very simple set of meters. You do have the option to be able to switch these between VU or Peak Mode, depending on what you want to be viewing at the time. If you click on where it says Vintage Meter, you can also access various controls which allow you to adjust the response time of the meters, which is also quite handy. So again, a very simple plugin, but I do find it very handy, especially in a mastering situation, can allow you to find the right volume level for the sound. So again, just like the other ones, this one is freely available on the PSP website. So make sure you check all these ones out. And like I said, you may find one or more of them may be absolutely perfect for you. So make sure you keep an eye out for further tutorials, looking at other free products, as there's a fair few good ones out there that we'll be looking at over time. 
and I hope to see you again in another Ben Ross's Conservatorium of Audio tutorial. Thanks for watching.